Hi there, Henry from 9 Virgin, the Porsche people in Uxbridge. Welcome to our another new video. Um, we're back. Uh, lockdown has pretty much lifted for us now. It's a new normal. We have social distancing and all strange things like that. But we are back. We have guys working here. We're buying and selling cars uh, and there's activity and it feels really good. So we're uh, happy to be back and, and doing some business again. In our last video, I did the 964 celebration or 964 Jubilee, and I alluded to the fact that with it, Porsche had resurrected something they did with the 3.2 Carreras, namely the Supersport. This week, we've taken in a couple of 3.2 Carreras. We do do Porsches other than black 3.2 Carreras, it's just they both happened to come in this week, which is strange. Uh, one of which was this bad boy here, which is a, a 3.2 Carrera Supersport Cabriolet. So what I'm gonna do, it's not a big long video, this one, I'm just going to do a little potted history of the 3.2 Super Sports because it kind of follows on a little bit from the 964 Jubilee or 964 Celebration video, which we did. Um, so what have you got here? So these are essentially a pair of 3.2 Carreras of a very similar vintage. This is a normal 3.2 Carrera Targa. This is a Super Sport 3.2 Carrera Cabriolet. In 1984, you could go to Porsche and say, hello, will you build me a Porsche 911 uh, with a turbo body, but a normally aspirated engine? And their sort of special team uh, would, 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 would do that for you. And then in 1985, they actually made it a model which you could buy off the shelf, which was the Super Sport. And what does the Super Sport give you? It gives you the turbo look, the turbo body, um, which on these is it's a big difference. I mean, particularly from the back, you've got you know massive wide arches. Looking from the back, you've got a, a big wide arse on the thing, as opposed to a much more compact thing. So you'd see the the big arches on there. Uh, front spoiler, you'll see. Uh, you also got turbo brakes and turbo suspension, and you also got wider wheels. You've got seven inch wheels at the front, and you've got nine inch wheels on the back. So when you compare the two, the uh, normal cars were, were, were the fronts of these an inch smaller on the front to these um, quite often as cars go on you'll see people will change wheels and so on and so forth so sometimes you'll find 3.2 crowds with nines on the back and so on but essentially from the factory these were seven inch on the front and nine on the rear you also got a 3.3 Carrera rear spoiler this particular car at some stage in its life has been despoilered and so it's got a clean line uh, despoiler look to it and you see that quite a lot with these 3.2 crowds people like the more classic retro uh, despoilered cars and it's a fairly easy job to do so um, you see quite a lot of them which don't necessarily retain their rear spoilers either the normal 3.2 Carrera spoiler or the 3.3 turbo rear spoiler of the Super Sport. So why would somebody want to buy a Super Sport as opposed to just going out there and saying well I'll have a, I'll have a turbo um, the normal 3.2 Carrera, it's 230, 231 horsepower, 0 to 60, a bit under six seconds. So it's not a slow car. Uh, the uh, 3.3 Turbo was 300 horsepower, so you know it was a more powerful car. But if you remember when we did the video on the turbos, they are a bit of a harder car to drive. There's a knack to driving them because you've almost got two engines. You've got your normal engine and the turbo, and you have to make sure that the engine revs are high enough so there's enough pressure for the turbo so the turbo can actually do its thing. And there's a danger you kind of get a bit bogged down in the, in the lower rev ranges. Um, and so you have to drive them possibly more aggressively just to keep that turbo boost pressure. Um, whereas with the uh, normal 3.2 Carrera, there's torque from really, really low down. So it's a really nice, it can be quite a lazy car to drive. You can potter, stay in a high gear, it pulls through, and people like that. Also, the 911 Turbo was an expensive car, and a Super Sport was a cheaper car, so you saved quite a lot of money. So if you wanted the, the look of the Turbo, but didn't necessarily need the absolute power of the Turbo, wanted to save some money, Super Sport was the way to go. So the 3.2 Carrera was available in, in three different body styles. You could have the Coupe, you could have the Targa, which is the car over there, or the Cabriolet. When the Cabriolet first came out, it had a, a manual roof, so you had to release some little clips just at the top rail of the windscreen here, manually fold the roof back. For, I 
think it was a 1987 model year. I think it was August, September of 86 for the 87 model year. Uh, Porsche introduced a power roof uh, for the 32 Crown and it was a full power roof. So um, it, the little uh, locks on the top rail there are uh, the motors in them, two individual motors. And then once they've released, the micro switch sends a signal to the motor in the back, which works two gearboxes either side. And this gearbox, quite a nice little elliptoid gearbox, um, quite nice, comes back and opens the roof. So let's get the roof down. But I should impart some vital knowledge to you first. Come round this way, Ems. So I'm wedged in the back of the car for a reason. Uh, 3.2 Carrera has got a power roof. However, a little handy hint, if you're gonna put the roof down on the 3.2 Carrera, a couple of things you need to be aware of. It's a plastic back screen, so don't do it if it's really, really cold. I think Porsche said freezing, so anything below uh, freezing point, uh, if you put the roof down, there's a danger that you'll crack the back screen, and I have seen it happen. Um, but I'm gonna go a little bit beyond that, and what I would recommend you do, if you're gonna put the roof down on your 3.2, fold the back seats down, like so, and there's a little zip in the back here. Undo the zip, and then put the back, uh, put the roof down, and it just lets the uh, back screen, make sure you don't get any creases in your back screen, which will help you. So having put the back window down, two other things you need to do. First of all, make sure your handbrake's applied, and then you turn the key to the first position on the ignition. So not so the ignition's on, but so you're in the accessory position. And this all was done so you couldn't put the roof up and down when you were driving along, wind gets behind it and it damages it. So keep the first position, and then you've got to find the button for the roof, which can be, it's a 3-2 Carrera, Lord knows where the buttons are. On this one, it's just sitting underneath here. And there we go. So motors open on the top rails, and then the roof goes back almost silently. So we've now got the roof down, and you've also got this tonneau cover, which you can clip on. And I have to say, you do realize how far convertible roofs have come uh, since this was built. Obviously, this is, you know, even for a power roof, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't bother with a tonneau cover. But uh, if you want, we're going to have your roof down for a while, you'd put the tonneau on just to neaten it up a little bit and make it look nice. And the last thing you do, put the seats up. So a bit of a faff, but tonneau cover on. So if you're going to have the roof down for the day, just neatens the thing up a little bit thing to uh, keep in mind when you're putting the roof back up on these it's not a bad thing as the roof comes over just to sort of catch it this is actually quite well adjusted so it doesn't slam down but just make sure the roof as it comes over doesn't slam into the top rail of the windscreen there so I always just tend to put a hand there just in case it does. as I say this is quite nicely adjusted but if you've got a little bit of uh, play in the side gearbox particularly the mounts they just move a little bit uh, the roof tends to slam down if it's not adjusted properly, so just catch it with your hand as it's coming down. Uh, a couple of other things you can look at on the Super Sport. If you open the bonnet, and the magical, if you want to hear, magical sticker that lives under the bonnet, hopefully, if it's still there, you've got various uh, codes, and uh, I think M491 allegedly is the code for the super sport a little bit of confusion some people have it listed as sports equipment which would be front and rear spoilers um, i'm pretty sure though 491 is a super sport as opposed to just sports equipment but i i bow to superior knowledge as with most things uh, and something else worth looking at just wander around here ems see if you can film the chassis number that silver little plate just in there this little piece just in here uh, a couple of things you can look at on here. You've got the chassis number across there. WPO tells me it's a Porsche. Go ZZZ. 9-1 are the first two uh, letters of the 911 model year. Uh, Z's, a, I think, a filler. Uh, a J tells me it's uh, the year of the vehicle. S, built in Stuttgart. And then there's a 15, uh, which tells me it's a factory cabriolet. If that was a 14, it would be a Targa. And if it was a 10, it would be a coupe. And then the actual number of the car for that year. So just uh, you know that it's a it's a factory convertible
uh, or cabriolet. Uh, it is actually possible, uh, and it has been done, um, I've actually done it myself, to convert a Targa into a full convertible. Um, way, way, way back in the day, I actually made a, a turbo-bodied, uh, power-roofed uh, cabriolet out of a Targa. It's a very similar body shell, and you can actually get the panel that takes the roof that welds in just on the top of the quarter panel. So uh, worth checking with these just to make sure you have got a genuine convertible and not something that's been converted. You'll see some earlier, some pre-83, uh, when I think the, the uh, uh, 3 to SC cabs first came out. I've seen, you know, 1980, 1981 convertibles, and they clearly are targets that have been uh, turned into uh, convertibles. So uh, just check with the chassis number, check it's a 15 chassis number. Tells you it's a factory cabriolet. So there you go, as I said, really quick video this. We're not taking it out, we've been out in the 3.2 crowd before. This is a G50 gearbox, a later car. I think the one we went out in might have been a 915 gearbox, but um, you know we, we have sort of done the, the 3.2 Carrera. So I just wanted to cover this, A, because it was a super sport and it led on from the 964 Jubilee or Celebration, uh, just to show you what a super sport is. And also quite nice having a, a cabriolet just to talk around one or two of the features on the cabriolet, but so just a, just a quick video. Hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for following us. Thanks for watching the videos. And as I say, we are sort of back now. We're working, we're buying and selling cars, which is nice. So we'll no doubt get some more cars. I've got a couple of other cars we've taken in this week, which if I get a moment, I'll do some videos on uh, some quite interesting cars. So hopefully if I get some time, I'll, I'll do those. But in the meantime, I'm Henry. We're Nylon Virgin. Many thanks for watching. Cheers, bye-bye.